Hello students, today in this lecture I am going to explain most important and previous year neat questions from the topic called male reproductive system. And synapses of this topic I have already explained in the previous lectures. If you want to know that you just click the links given below in the description of this video. So, now let us start this class today. So, male reproductive system here the first question is what is the correct sequence of sperm formation? You know sperm formation means spermatogenesis. Actually spermatogenesis it starts from this spermatogonium which is diploid. This diploid spermatogonium you know it divide by mitotically it increase in its number whereas type 2 spermatogonium cells that differentiate to give rise to a large uh, cell that is called primary spermatocyte. So, the primary spermatocyte is also deployed. This primary spermatocyte it undergo meiotic division. After meiosis it form two haploid cells. These two haploid cells are called as the secondary spermatocytes. These are secondary spermatocytes. You know these secondary spermatocytes you know these are formed by meiosis 1. After meiosis 2 each secondary spermatocyte it gives rise to two haploid cells from each secondary spermatocyte that means finally we get four haploid daughter cells these are the spermatids. This non motile spermatids or transformed they differentiate and they transformed into motile sperms or spermatozoa. So, this is the sequence of the spermatogenesis. So, here primary spermatocyte and secondary spermatocyte together can be considered as the spermatocyte itself. Now, let us take the options. So, here the exact correct sequence you can see in the option 3 spermatogonia, spermatocytes that means both primary and secondary, spermatid and spermatozoa means sperms. So, option 3 is the right answer for this question. Now, let us take next question. So, here this question is the leading cells are found in the human body are the secretory source of actually leading cells you know these cells are found in the interstitial space of uh, the testicular lobule. You know if you take the sectional view of a testicular lobule, this one is one seminiferous tubule and this is another seminiferous tubule. Now, let us take this is the chamber the testicular lobule. Here in the chamber you can see few specialized cells. These cells are called as leading cells. These leading cells or interstitial cells helps in the synthesis and secretion of androgens. So, androgens these are formed from the lilic cells this is the right answer. But let us have a look on the other options also. While you studying for neat examination, related to questions in our exam only frame use So, let us have a look. Glucagon actually it is a a uh, hormone that actually uh, increases the blood glucose level hyperglycemic hormone and what is the secretory source of glucagon alpha cells of islets of Langerhans. So, inside the pancreas you can see islets of Langerhans in these alpha cells secrete glucagon whereas when it comes to the progesterone, progesterone is the female sex hormone this progesterone it is secreted either by corpus luteum. This is formed by the uh, after rupturing of the graphene follicle that graphene follicle develops into corpus luteum that gives rise to progesterone hormone. Even during the pregnancy there is one more structure that synthesizes this hormone is placenta. And finally, the interstitial uh, sorry uh, intestinal mucus intestinal mucus it is secreted from the goblet cells that you can see in the epithelium lining of the intestine. So, this is about the second question the right answer is androgens. Now, let us take the next question. So, the third question is the testis in humans are situated outside the abdominal cavity. 
inside a pouch called scrotum the purpose served is for what is the purpose why the testes are present outside the abdomen inside the scrotum that means the presence of extra abdominal testes so this question is related to the function of the scrotum you know we have already studied in the previous lectures the scrotum it is mainly helpful to maintain sorry the scrotum it is mainly helpful to maintain the temperature of testes around 2 to 2.5 degree celsius less than normal body temperature so you can directly tell the answer for this question is maintaining the scrotal temperature lower than the internal body temperature what if the scrotum is situated inside the abdomen then its temperature will be 37 degree celsius you know at this temperature there will be no spermatogenesis so that the scrotum is situated outside the body means extra abdominal region so for this question the right answer is option 2 but when we take the other options those are not the right answers if you take the providing the secondary sexual features you know it is by the hormone called androgen when human males reaches to puberty around 13 to 14 years of age there you can see the development of uh, means formation of pubic hairs formation of beard moustache and as well as uh, deepening of the voice are the characters these are the secondary sexual characters so that is mainly due to the synthesis of androgen during puberty and if you take the other points those are also wrong escaping any possible uh, compression by the visceral organs actually inside our body the visceral organs are supported by different types of peritoneum layers those peritoneums they held the organs in their own position so if you take for example we have the heart situated slightly tilted towards the left and around that region lungs also there so heart cannot be compressed because of the presence of lungs why lungs heart and every visceral organ is supported by a, a specialized a peritoneum layers so these peritoneum layers helpful for maintenance of those organs uh, and avoiding the compression but so this is not the answer and one more thing that you have to remember actually testis you know uh, they are not exactly situated at the same line so if you if you uh, take the testis one testis is uh, slightly above the another one one is lowered and one is slightly above so while walking that prevent the friction between the testis and finally providing more space for the growth of epididymis so it is also not the right answer so epididymis uh, it does not require much space so the right answer is option 2 now let us take the next question so this question is uh, it was asked in the year 2010 aipm examination sertoli cells are found in so sertoli cells as called as sustenticular or nurse cells these cells are pyramidal shaped they are present inside the seminiferous tubule so let us have a look on the option pancreas and secretes uh, cholecystokinin this is wrong ovaries and secret progesterone is also wrong uh, adrenal cortex and secret adrenaline is also wrong they are present inside the seminiferous tubule and provide nutrition to the germ cell so hence sertoli cells are also called as nurse cells or sustenticular cells so option 4 is the right option for this question okay now let us have a look on the next question so this question question number 5 seminal plasma in human males is rich in you know the seminal plasma if you take semen or semen someone pronounce like that it includes seminal plasma plus sperms here the seminal plasma it is secreted mainly by three most important accessory glands that are present in the human one is seminal uh, vesicles there are a pair of seminal vesicles these seminal vesicles they are uh, contribute about uh, 60 to 75 or 65 to 70 percent in some books you can see uh, 60 to 70 percent of the seminal plasma and the seminal vesicles they secrete a seminal plasma which is having uh, generally slightly alkaline about 7.4 its ph is 7.4 and what is the main component or uh, components that are present in this 
seminal plasma secreted by seminal vesicle that includes fructose, prostaglandins, fibrinogen, citrate, inositol and some other proteins are also there. They are the main components of that are present in, in the seminal plasma secreted by this seminal vesicle. Now the next uh, type of gland, the second gland, uh, there is a single uh, chestnut sized gland which is the prostate gland. This prostate gland of course it contributes for about uh, 25 to 30 percent of the seminal plasma. What are the main components that include in the prostate gland means uh, the secretion of seminal plasma prostate gland actually its pH is around 6.4 and the components that includes citric acid, phosphates, calcium ions, profibrinolysin. And even it also includes uh, the prostaglandins. Along with that, it may also have uh, certain uh, clotting factors or coagulating factors. Right. So, these are the components that are found here. But the third type of the gland, you know, bulbourethral gland, which is also called as copper's gland, actually that secrete uh, alkaline mucus or alkaline lubricating fluid that mainly responsible for the lubrication of penis and as well as uh, neutralize the acidic condition that is found in the urethra or urinogenital duct. Now, let us have a look on the option ribosomes sorry ribose, potassium, fructose, calcium, glucose, calcium, DNA and testosterone. So, in this option the right option is fructose and calcium you can see here fructose and here you can see the calcium. So, the right answer for this question is option 3. Now, let us take the next question. This question was in the year 2015 in a in AIPMT examination. So, here which of the following cells during gametogenesis is normally deployed? So, there are options secondary polar body, primary polar body, spermatid and spermatogonia. So, we have just now uh, studied the spermatogenesis process. So, directly I, I am going to tell you the answer. The right answer is spermatogonia. Spermatogonia is deployed, whereas the other three secondary, primary polar body, and spermatids, these are haploid. Okay, this is the right answer. Now, let us take the next question. Here, the question. Which of the following statements is false in respect to viability of mammalian sperms? So, the first option is sperms must be concentrated in thick suspension. So, this option is the right option. So, here we have to search uh, for the wrong option. So, false statement. So, this statement is right. Why? Because actually uh, you know just now we have studied in the seminal plasma it is having the coagulating factors that coagulating factors are responsible for the formation of a thick suspension uh, which is very helpful uh, for the maintenance of motility of the sperm. So, this is the correct statement, but we have to search the false statement. Sperm is viable only for up to 24 hours. So, this is wrong. Sperm is viable about 48 to 72 hours. This is the wrong statement. So, this is the answer for this question. So, we need false statement. So, let us have a look on the other two options. Survival of sperm depends on the pH of the medium and is more active in alkaline medium S. So, sperms in a pyrothantore alkaline medium only. So, pH if you take uh, the pH of seminal plasma around 7.6 irutte pH total seminal plasma. Acidic conditionally sperms will get destroyed, they will not survive. So, they need alkaline condition that is why the seminal plasma is alkaline. So, this is also the correct statement. 
and viability of a sperm is determined by its motility as yes, sperm is motile it is having a flagella and, uh, and, uh, and as well as the middle piece of the sperm it having mitochondria that provide energy for the motility of sperm. So, if the sperm do not have that conditions then there will be no viability of the sperm. So, viability means sperm yes to hours so viable irutte means it has the ability to fertilize the egg yes to hours on the ability to maintain mark of the other now viability and the career would so viability another motility when it depend on the other cup under for example I told in the previous classes itself humans only in a single ejaculation there must be 200 to 300 million sperm cervix. Among these 200 to 300 million, million sperms, 60 percent of the sperms should show vigorous motility. 60 percent of sperms only strong motility and among these 60 percent, 40 percent should be normal means having normal structure and they must have normal functions. So, this is the criteria that decide the fertility of the male individual. So, if you are a male or a male person, you will have a fertility, you will have a capacity, otherwise you will have a So, these three statements are correct. According to this question, the false statement is option 2. Okay. Now, let us take the next question. So, here, if, if for some reason the vasa efferentia in the human reproductive system get blocked the gametes will not be transported from. So, you have to remember which is blocked vasa efferentia block agide, but the question is clear and note because the question first nita karta maadko beko. Gametes will not be transported from one the head not transported to one the head from one the head So, either prakara na otta now order the corona, yaw orderly uh, ducts are really at the structures arranged. If you take this one, is a testicular lobule. Testicular lobule only inside you can see the seminiferous tubule. So, this one is the seminiferous tubule at the tower. Seminiferous tubules are now one kind of unite angle to that form a network of tubules and a formation model. So, this network of tubules is called as rete testis idanna naam enu kartivi rete testis anta kartivi so rete testis in the around 15 to 20 highly convoluted ductules arise out so this one is seminiferous tubule okay and this region is rete testis Next, rete testis ad mele, even ducts arise out around 15 to 20 highly convoluted ductules at the head. So, these are vasa efferentia. Vasa efferentia ad mele, next to birth the structure, all vasa efferentia unite to form a comma shaped structure. So, that comma shaped structure that arise is called as the epididymis. So, E on the region and now in the criteria right epididymis. So, illiberty. So, you will correct the order not only first seminiferous tibi also rated testis so vasa efferentia and epididymis. So, is to portion you could all over the country the testis so. This is epididymis. Testis and epididymis are the testicles. So, options are not available. Vagina to uterus, testis to epididymis, epididymis to vas deferens, ovary to uterus. So, L in the LA transport is not available. Testis in the epididymis is transport is not available. This portion, vasa efferentia, is not available. So, sperms are not transported from testis to epididymis. So, this is the right answer. Option 2 is the right answer. Now, let us take the next question. Which one of the following statement about human sperm is correct? So, here the options that includes acrosome serve no particular function, but acrosome it has the function. What is the main function of acrosome? 
it has several enzymes which are collectively called as sperm lysins. These sperm lysins uh, for example, it includes hyaluronidase, neuraminidase, acrosins, phosphatase there are different types of uh, hydrolytic enzymes are there which are collectively called as sperm lysins. These sperm lysins when sperm come in contact with the egg cell. So, the acrosome will break or burst it releases the enzymes and that enzymes responsible for disintegrating the envelope protective envelope present around the egg and thereby facilitating the process of fertilization. So, that is the main function of acrosome. So, this is not the right answer and acrosome has a conical pointed structure used for piercing and penetrating the egg resulting in the fertilization. Of course, acrosome has a conical pointed structure if you observe the structure of sperm properly you know in the in the for example, this one is the sperm nucleus and here at this region you can see the presence of the acrosome it is conical pointed structure. But someone think like because of this conical structure the sperm can penetrate the egg it is not possible as I said earlier when it comes in contact with the egg cell this membrane will burst and releases the enzymes present in this. So, this is also not the right answer it cannot pierce the egg cell. So, as I said earlier the right answer is option 3 the sperm lysins in the acrosome dissolve the egg envelope facilitating the fertilization this is the right answer. Okay. Now, let us take the next question which of the following depicts the correct pathway of transport of sperms just now we have studied the pathway you know the uh, pathway inside the testis if you take it includes seminiferous tubules. This seminiferous tubules are the functional unit of testis where the process of formation of sperms takes place and after releasing from seminiferous tubules the sperms reach to rete testis. From rete testis the sperms enter into vasa efferentia. So, you have to remember vasa efferentia means it is a efferent ductule what it and from vasa efferentia it leads to epididymis from epididymis sperms finally enters into vas deferens or it is also called as ductus deferens from vas deferens sperms enters into the urinogenital duct or which is simply called as urethra. So, here urethra it is a common passage for both sperm that means for semen and as well as for urine. So, this is actually the pathway. So, let us take the option rete testis, efferent ductule, epididymis, vas differences. This option is the right answer. From rete testis, it, re, it leads to the efferent ductules, vasa efferentia itself is called efferent ductules and from here to epididymis, epididymis to vas difference. So, let us have a look on other options also. From rete testis, epididymis is not possible. From rete testis, it will not directly go to vas difference, it is also wrong. Uh, from efferent ductules actually first what comes is rete testis after rete testis efferent ductules will come. So, the right answer is option 1. Now, let us take the next question. The shared terminal ducts of reproductive and urinary system shared means common common terminal terminal means last duct actually in humans there are uh, mainly 4 accessory ducts are mentioned in your prescribed book. But along with that four accessory ducts you know the four accessory ducts are rete testis, vasa efferentia, epididymis and vas difference. Along with that a few two more ducts are also there one is ejaculatory duct and another one is urethra. Urethra is also a duct, but the question is shared terminal ducts that means for both reproductive and as well as for urinary system which is a common duct and the reproductive system in the birth of sperms carry model you know. Urinary system in the release of the urine carry model the kuno. Yau the one the common pathway the ekana held the anime urethra. Urethra is a common passage or common pathway for both reproductive and as well as urinary system. So, for this question, the right answer is urethra. But confuse Marco Bedi ureter means there are two ureters, each ureter arises from kidney and that joins to the urinary bladder kidney in the one one kidney in the one one ureter arise out the other urinary bladder ki join out the ok. So, this is about this question now let us take the next question. So, given below is the diagrammatic sketch of the portion of human male reproductive system 
select the correct set of names of the parts labeled as a b c and d now let us take here a a no there no di illi this is the duct which ascends to the abdomen abdomen inge ascend aagta hogta ide antandre this one is for sure vas difference vas difference abdomen inge ascend aagi hogutte and after ascending this vas difference you know it receive duct from seminal vesicle so seminal vesicles in the duct are receive maadkolthe so this structures so this portion you can see here it is yella so this portion it is actually the seminal vesicle seminal vesicle what it and the next one is c you can see here this one this one is the c this one is a single uh, you know uh, golf ball size or chestnut size the gland this gland is the prostate gland c is the prostate gland and finally d so here you can see this portion this portion and this portion is the d so here there are a pair of small p sized glands so the d is bulbo urethral gland or coppers gland so uh, if you take the order a is vas difference so among these option you eliminate option 1 and option 4 there is no vas difference first and b is seminal vesicles in both b is after vas difference the second one is seminal vesicle and c here it is the prostate gland so this one is the right answer option 2 vas difference seminal vesicle prostate gland which is finally followed by bulbo urethral gland so the d is the bulbo urethral gland so for this question the right answer is option 2 now let us take the next question so here this question is about the settle cells are like regulated by the pituitary hormone known as pituitary yav pituitary hormone settle cells na regulate madutte ante nenu pitkoni so only two pituitary hormones are possible hege andre first hypothalamus thavoli hypothalamus is a gland that acts on means that secrete gnrh gonadotrophin releasing hormones so this gnrh acts on anterior pituitary gland even the anterior anterior pituitary gland in response to the gnrh it secrete two gonadotrophins yav pantandre lh and fsh sorry ivarade gonadotrophins only these two can acts on testis not other so ivaradna eliminate maadi option 3 and option 4 is not possible now let us take what is the function of lh and fsh lh in males it is also called as icsh here i say such andre interstitial cell stimulating hormone anta andre idu interstitial cells mele act madutte yavudu interstitial cells ledic cells anna interstitial cells anta karithivi so lh acts on ledic cells so eliminate lh so the right answer is fsh fsh acts on settle cells and stimulates the secretion of abp and uh, inhibin other than already previous classes al helidini you can see those videos so right answer for this question is option 2 now let us take the next question okay here the question is cryptorchidism is con is the condition in man when you have to remember the term cryptorchidism it is derived from two greek words one is cryptos cryptos means hidden and arches arches means testicles but the final again meaning baruthe hidden testicles anta andre testicles scrotum olagade irodilla testicles are not descended into the scrotum ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಮೇ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಲಾಂಗ್ ದ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಗ್ ವೈನಲ್ ಕೆನಾಲ್ ಇಂಗ್ ವೈನಲ್ ಕೆನಾಲಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಇನ್ನು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಮೇಲೆ ರೀಚನ್ಗೆ ಬೇಕಾದರೂ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಕೂತಿರ್ಬೋದು ಇಂಟ್ರಾ ಅಬ್ಡಾಮಿನ್ ಅಬ್ಡಾಮಿನ್ ಒಳಗಡೆನೇ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಹೊರಗೆ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಆಗ್ದಿರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರೋಟಮ್ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರೋಟಮ್ ದಟ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟಾರ್ ಚಿಟಿಸಮ್ ಸೊ ನೋಡಿ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದಿ ಫೋರ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಯಾವ್ದು ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ತಗೊಳ್ಳೋಣ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ next test do not descend into the scrotum so this one is the right answer 
ವೆನ್ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಬೋಧ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಡ್ ಆಗದೇ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಯಾವುದಾದ್ರೂ ಒಂದು ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಡ್ ಆಗದೇ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಆ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ನ ನಾವು ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟಾಡ್ ಸಿಟಿಸಮ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿತೀವಿ ಸೊ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಎನ್ಲಾರ್ಜಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರೋಟಮ್ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಏನಾದರೂ ಎನ್ಲಾರ್ಜ್ ಆದರೆ ಇದನ್ನು ಸ್ಕ್ರೋಟಮ್ ಎನ್ಲಾರ್ಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಥವಾ ಸ್ಕ್ರೋಟಮ್ ಸ್ವೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿಬೋದು ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಡಿಜನ್ರೇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರೋಟಮ್ ಡಿಜನ್ರೇಟ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಶ್ರಿಂಕ್ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ದಟ್ ಶ್ರಿಂಕೇಜ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ಸನ್ನು ನಾವು ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಲರ್ ಅಟ್ರೋಪಿ ಅಂತ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಟೆರ್ಮಿನಾಲಜಿ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಬಿಡಿ ಸೊ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಓಕೆ ನಾವು ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೈನಲ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಬಲ್ಬೋ ಇರೆತ್ರಲ್ ಗ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನೋನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಇದು ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ನೌ ಬಲ್ಬೋ ಇರೆತ್ರಲ್ ಗ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನೋನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಕಾಪರ್ಸ್ ಗ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಇಸ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೊ ರಿಮೇನಿಂಗ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ರಿಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಫೀಮೇಲ್ ರೀಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಮ್ ಸಿ ಕ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಎಮ್ ಸಿ ಕ್ಯೂಸ್ ರಿಲೇಟ